When you open a content studio in your area, you are then targeting and catering to and having a space for all the content creators, all the audio techs, all the videographers, all the photographers, all the brands, small business owners, all the nonprofits that are in your area that can use your space to create content, right? Again, it's not the whole 300 billy, but it's a small piece that still matters, okay? And if you're providing something that they didn't have before, then it's definitely valuable. All right, did you know that the content creation industry is worth $300 billion, is comprised of millions of creators and hundreds of platforms? And you know what all of these people need? A beautiful space like this to create. I'm Patrice, the owner of Camp Space, and I want to help you open your own content studio. I know it might sound hard, it might sound like a lot, but I promise you with the tips that I'm going to give you, it will be a very easy, seamless process. Easy, seamless process to help you get from just being someone that rents these spaces to being the person that owns the spaces and being the person that's a part of this $300 billion industry. Let me tell you guys, content is not going anywhere. Content is here to stay. Companies are not even spending a ton of money on advertising in the way that we're used to from the past. Companies are looking for spaces to create their own content. They're hosting podcasts. They're hiring influencers. They're doing all the things that they're going to need your studio to make it happen. So tap the link in the show notes so that you can be a part of my content studio blueprint masterclass. I don't even know what I'm calling it, but it's going to be amazing. All the details are in the show notes. Let me help you open your own content studio so that you can be a part of the industry, but also so you can have your own place to create content too, right? It's so important to have a space in this world to make sure that you are being heard. And I want to help you do that. Tap the link in the show notes. Hey you, welcome to Shades of Content, a show that teaches entrepreneurs how to effectively use content to market their business and stay content while doing it. I'm your host, Patrice, a wife, a mom of three, and a 15-year public relations and marketing professional who decided to open a brick and mortar content studio four years ago. And I honestly haven't looked back since. Join me as I share my experiences and the experiences of other entrepreneurs who, like me, are navigating this maze of owning a business, running a family, and trying to stay sane and healthy while doing it. I'll tell you, it's an amazingly challenging journey, but I honestly wouldn't have it any other way. See you soon. Outsource everything. Outsource everything. Let me tell you all the things that I outsource. I have my clothes picked up and washed and delivered and folded. I don't wash clothes on a consistent basis anymore because I have these two little humans who have lots of clothes that they get messy. So I use a company, we put all their dirty clothes in and then they come, I schedule it on the app, they come and pick the clothes up, they drop it off the next day. I also outsource my cleaning. I have a cleaning lady. Now I'll clean up like, you know, we'll vacuum, we'll do the simple stuff every other day or so, but I have my cleaning lady come to our house once a month and clean the house top to bottom. Because that is just not something that I have time to do. Just like I don't have time to be sitting and folding clothes. Like that ain't the best use of my time. Obviously, some things I like to just pick up myself. But for the most part, we're Instacarting it. So we're outsourcing things. This podcast that you're listening to, I have a team that comes in and does the physical recording and the audio. And then I have a VA in the Philippines. Shout out to Aileen. And she's been great. That's right, busy mompreneurs. Now is the time to outsource everything. And I have created the How to Find a Virtual Assistant e-guide that can literally take you from doing everything to doing none of the things. Tap the link in the show notes. Not only do I give you the tips to finding the perfect virtual assistant, but I also list 20 plus companies that are reputable, highly recommended, and you can access them immediately to get your virtual assistant found and hired. Tap the link in the show notes for your how to find a virtual assistant guide. Can't wait to help you move through life with more contentment. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Happy Friday. Welcome back to Shades of Content. I am so happy to be here. Yo, I can't even say how thankful I am to be able to come into my studio that I own, that I've owned for five years, and create content about what I enjoy, i.e. content and entrepreneurship and motherhood and being content with people that I really rock with. Like, I have to shout out Jabari They'll be linked in the show notes. I have to shout out Ty. We also have Telly here. And also, like, whenever new people come into the fold, they just 
fit so well. And I'm so thankful for that. So the quick nugget, we only a minute in, we only a minute in and I already got a nugget for you. When it's something that you should be doing, it happens very easily. It just happens. It just flows. It comes to you. The people flow through you. You are always given more cues and more like nuggets to keep going. Do not ignore that. That is God saying, you doing what I'm telling you to do? You on the right track? Keep going. I know, and I've said this on the show before, I know for a fact that this show is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And it took three years to really click for me. And that's okay, right? Because you have to spend time getting it and feeling it. But baby, now that I feel it and I know, I'm not stopping. And I'm just so thankful that I have the team around me that can help make it a reality every single week. Um, hey, Aileen. Oh, y'all know I always got to shout out Aileen. But it just feels great. So again, if you are in the, a space where you know whatever you're doing just gives you the the warm and tingly feelings inside and things just happen to always work out, you're in alignment with exactly what you should be doing. Don't stop doing that. Even if you have another job, even if you have some things that is making doing that thing difficult, don't stop doing it. I promise you it will all work out. Okay, let's get into the episode. Welcome back to Shades of Content, the show that teaches content marketing tips and contentment hacks to busy millennial mompreneurs. If you're watching the show, you've either been listening for a while, maybe you stumbled upon a viral clip that we had. I'm telling you, you go viral one time, y'all never going to hear the end of that, okay? Um, or maybe someone shared it with you, but at the end of the day, I'm Patrice I have three children. My oldest son is right here with me. He's been on this mompreneurship journey with me since he was a baby. No lie. When he was in my stomach, I was doing PR for a big sneaker event in Washington, D.C. So he's literally been on this this journey with me. I have two other young ones. I am married. I'm a brick and mortar content studio owner. I also have a full-time job. I'm a director of comms and marketing for a mega church. Life gets hectic, but because I love this space that I'm in, I continue to bring you all these very educational, very helpful episodes that hopefully take you to the next step in your mompreneurship, hopefully give you um, some insight on how to live more content lives. What does content mean? Content means peaceful satisfaction. Life can be difficult. Life can be busy. Life can be stressful AF. But when you're able to find those nuggets in those little moments in time of peaceful satisfaction, and if you can be satisfied with where you are in your life, no matter how crazy it is, that's contentment. And that's what I wish for every single person, not just those that are watching and listening to the show, but those who are everybody. Obviously, I have a special place in my heart for mompreneur. So we release small hack episodes every Wednesday and then Friday, which is today, you get full episodes. And this one isn't going to be that long. Um, we've had some really great uh, interview episodes lately, which I love talking to my people. But this one's going to be a solo episode because I just had to drop some knowledge for you all. Before we get into that, though, let's read a review because we got a review. We have not gotten a review in a long time. So I said I was going to stop asking for it. We've talked about this before. When you're constantly asking for a thing, I think there's a difference between like manifesting and putting things into the universe and looking desperate. And I felt like I was looking desperate asking y'all for these reviews every, make sure you leave a review. And I said I wasn't doing it no more in the last episode. As soon as I said that, we got a review, period. Okay, so this one is for Liz Renee. Hi, Liz. Liz is actually my soror, and she's been on a guest on the show. All right, so this is her review. I had the opportunity to join Patrice for episode 108 and then started listening to the podcast regularly. I really enjoy tuning in for the small business hacks, and I also appreciate how every episode leaves you feeling motivated to pour into your businesses in a way that sustains you rather than drains you. Love what you're doing, Patrice. Okay, Liz, you the one. Thank you so much. And I'm probably going to use that tagline because you said it. Pour into your business in a way that sustains you rather than drains you. That's the bar. 
That's the bar. Thank you, Liz. If you don't know who Liz Renee is, she's also linked in the show notes. She is the founder of a card game company called Po Up Cards. Again, she was on the show, episode 108. I did not bribe her to leave this review. She just saw value in listening to this content after she was a guest on the show. And I appreciate it, Liz. So thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So this, like I said, this episode is going to be a short one, but this episode is actually near and dear to my heart. So while I say it's going to be short, it might be longer because I'm going to be talking about what I've been doing for five years. You saw the episode title, Four Reasons Why You Should Open a Content Studio Now. Four reasons why you should open a content studio now. I don't know if this is going to be a series or not. Just kind of depends on how I feel. But this has been in my heart for a while to share with you. And I've been doing this for five years. So if anybody knows how to own a content studio and why you should own a content studio, it's me. So get into this episode. Before you get into this episode, though, I want you to share. Click the like share link in whatever audio platform or video platform you're watching it in. Copy the link and then send it out to Three people, three people, so that they can also get into this. Because again, if you're listening, you're probably into content and content marketing in some way, shape, or form. All right, so the number one reason why you should open a content studio is that the content creation industry is a $300 billion plus dollar industry. Let me say it again, $300 billion industry. So that is how much money is being circulated Uh, in between creators, podcasters, businesses, designers, videographers, audio people, all of the individuals that make content creation real, they're circling, you know, the money is funneling, and it's $300 billion. That means that there is a ton of money, there's a huge market share that can be spent in your space. And I think when we hear, like, the, the idea is, like, we want to touch everyone, When you own a business, you don't actually need to touch everyone. You just need a small percentage. I'm not good at math. I'm not good at math. But I'll bet you that 2% of $300 is still a gang of money, right? So when you open a content studio in your area, you are then targeting and catering to and having a space for all the content creators, all the audio techs, All the videographers, all the photographers, all the brands, small business owners, all the nonprofits that are in your area that can use your space to create content, right? Again, it's not the whole 300 billy, but it's a small piece that still matters, okay? And if you're providing something that they didn't have before, then it's definitely valuable. In this space right now, I can tell you um, we've served huge production companies, national TV productions global heads and politics, influencers, um, high, low lux. When Janae used to live in the DMV area, she would record her brand content here. So not only was she recording her content here, but she was recording the liquor brand, the, the national, international liquor brand. They were coming through this space as well. So you, you, it's much more than just um, the creators across the street, which still have value. When you have a studio and we're calling the content studio, but it's really a production studio because huge productions come here. Then you are again, part of that huge industry, that huge market share that needs you. So the number one reason for opening a content studio is that it's a $300 billion industry. And if you just have a small piece of it, you're going to win. Another reason why you should open a content studio is that it's a very low cost industry to break into. Really, if I'm being honest, right, a content studio is it's four walls, right? This space is 1200 square feet. That is not big at all. It's the size of like a one bedroom apartment. We have a really nice backyard and we have a cute front yard. That's it. We got a kitchen. We got a nice bathroom. That's it. And when we opened, we weren't opening as a content studio. We were opening as a co-work space. In hindsight, this space is much better suited as a content studio. But, you know, you live and you learn. And that's why I very quickly pivoted. But all I needed to do was hire an interior designer. And because I had the budget, I was able to hire her. But if I wouldn't have had the budget, I would have figured out the decorations my damn self. Okay. Had her come. She painted. She clicked. She, you know, did all the decor. We added some outlets. And we made sure we treated the floor. We didn't even do nothing to the backyard. And we was ready to open in six weeks, if that. 
No, honestly, I think it only took us four weeks to really make this thing look like it needs to look. Thankfully, we didn't have to do any drywall. We didn't have to build any rooms or anything like that. So I'm really happy for that. And the key to you is if you do want to open a space, try to find a space that already has the hardware, right? You want a space that already has the plumbing. You want a space that already has the electric because then you're not going to have to put so much of your money in up front or you're not going to have to have your landlord put their money up that you're then going to have to pay back. We'll talk more on that later, but very low cost all in for me to make the space look pretty was about $6,000 for decor. But then when we added the paint and the electric, I think it came up to like 9,000. And if you've listened to the camp space story episode, I do get in a little more into that. Those notes are also in the show notes, but it didn't cost me much to make this space what it was. And I'll also tell you that I have not done, and I've said this on previous episodes, I haven't done much else to the space. We added a really nice green wall. I ordered those online and I had my guy Mo staple them to the wall. We switched the couch out. We don't really do too much. Like, and it's still a beautiful space. People walk into this space and they're just like, wow, so nice. And because it's a content studio, you want to make it, you want to make it look nice, but you want to make it more of a blank space so people can make it their own. And when you can leave something as a blank space, obviously you don't have to put as much money into it. So the number two reason why you should open a content studio is because it's a very low cost uh, industry to enter. So that's like high value industry that doesn't cost a lot to get into. Kind of a no brainer. Obviously you're going to have to pay your rent in the space, but the goal is to have all your content creators booking the space and that is how you're paying the rent but you can also be creative with that like we do full day buyouts so a production company when they need the space they're going to need it from 7 a.m for their team to come in to 7 p.m and longer so you do a full day out a full day buyout that's your rent paid in one in one booking okay so many many opportunities to make your money very easily low cost of entry to get into the industry The number three reason why you should open a content studio is that it honestly is very low wear and tear on your space. Here's the different kind of spaces you can have. You can have a content space or studio. You can have an event space. You can have a workspace. Okay. I've used this space, this venue as all three of those. And when we are used as a content studio, I rest easy at night. And I'm going to tell you why. When people come into the space and they shoot photos or video or record, they're not banging on walls. They're not moving furniture around. They're not doing anything crazy. So they come in for their three hours. They shoot. They move. They might move a chair here and there, and then they leave. They put the furniture back, and then they leave. That's it. That's it. Nothing is crazy. There's not, there's not a bunch of trash. There's not scuff marks on the walls. Like It's a very come in, you come out. You ain't really messing up my space. Now, when you have an event space, you got people bringing in rented furniture, moving all your furniture around so it can look like what it's to look like, what you want it to look like. You got all the event prep people, the event planner, all their vendors. You got caterers that might need to cook. You got people bumping into the walls because you take pictures and you happy and it's a baby shower and it's just all the people in the space at one time, like probably 20, 50, who knows how many people. All of that leads to wear and tear. So that's why I stopped doing events altogether. (laughs) Our first event was like a 50-person 40th birthday party. And while it was great, it was stressful. We had a bunch of trash. Like, it's just, it's, it's not a peace of mind state as a business owner for me. It might be great for you, but it wasn't for me. And once I realized that events wasn't really what I, what I even wanted the space to be used for because it was just too much wear and tear, stop advertising it altogether. Now, if somebody calls and says, hey, we love your space, can we host an event there? Then we look at the type of event they want to host and we tell them off rip, 20 people is the max. That's it. And that weeds out so many people that I don't even have to deal with, right? Because when you have an event space, the wear and tear is astronomical and you don't have to worry about that when you have a co-work space co-work spaces you're really not seeing those too much anymore because the pandemic let everybody work from home when you have a co-work space you do need to optimize the space so that multiple people can be working at one time that means you need to have desks that means you need to have comfortable chairs the wi-fi has to be 
top tier. You got to always have coffee on deck. You got to have water. You just have to have way too many things to make these people comfortable. And they're only going to be in the space. They're only paying you to be in the space monthly versus your content creators. They're paying you to be in the space hourly. And you might be saying, well, if I'm an event space, I could charge more. You absolutely can, but you're going to spend a good percentage of what you're charging and getting the space back up to rentable condition because, again, event spaces are just too much wear and tear. When you have a content studio, easy peasy, come in, take your pictures, put the furniture back, dip. So simple, okay? All right, y'all, so the fourth reason why you should open a content studio, and actually before I get into the fourth reason, there are many, many more reasons, and I'm going to share all those reasons with you in our Open a Content Studio Masterclass that is coming up. I can't wait. It's going to be three hours, probably longer than that, of me sharing with you why you should open a content studio, how you should open a content studio, who you're going to need and what you're going to need to open said content studio and how you can make this business last five years plus the same way that I have. So make sure that you tap the link in the show notes to register for the content studio masterclass It's going to be amazing. If you're getting anything from this little short episode right now, then you 100% need to tap the link and register. I cannot wait to host that one for you. And I think it will, I think we'll do even more either more masterclasses or some type of something that can help you even in the long term. But the first thing we're going to do is that masterclass. So make sure you tap the link in the show notes to get your spot. It is limited. Everybody can't be a part. Um, So you want to act fast. Okay, so the number four reason why you need to open a content studio is because you can create your own content in said studio. That is what I do. I don't go anywhere else to create my content. If your girl need to take a picture, she hires a photographer and we we get them pictures right here. Done. That's it. Why wouldn't you open a business that you can use for yourself if you're in this industry? This Having this space has saved me so much money. Um, when I record my podcast, we're here. Again, when I shoot photos, I'm here. When I have my kids' birthday parties, we have them here. We had my son's fourth birthday here in, in a, a couple months ago, and it was great. Like, I use this space for lots of things. My sister had her gender reveal here. Yes, these are events, but they're my family events, so there's some added value there. And on the flip side, you're advertising your business constantly, right? Like, I have I do my photo shoots here. Every episode of this podcast that you're watching – Someone is like, well, I wonder where she recorded that right here. Or someone is watching it and saying, oh, I want to do a podcast too. Let me reach out to do my own podcast in the space. This space is a, me creating my own content here is a walking billboard, a 24-7 marketing opportunity that just brings more eyes to the space. And so if you are trying to build up your own social capital, social proof, you want to build up your own brand Duh, like it's a no brainer to have a space that you're using to create all the amazing content, all the educational content, all the things that you're doing in your own space. So as your platform grows and more people learn about you, they're also learning about the space that you own. Wow, that's it. Four very, very clear, simple, no brainer ways on why you need to open your own content studio doesn't need to be a whole huge thing. It could be 600 square feet. You don't need a kitchen. It just needs to be a place where people can come in and be creative. But you also need to make sure that you know how to run the business because I've seen content studios open and then a year later they're closed. What I have here in Camp Space is an anomaly. There are no spaces that have been open five years that are branded the way that we brand. A lot of spaces that opened after us, especially during the pandemic, But when we're talking about industry leaders, camp is one of them. And I want to show you how I did it. Now, a lot of people are going to probably show you how they did it, but they haven't been open five years. They haven't had the type of clients that we have. They haven't seen the national press that we have. And so I so I can't wait to share all of those nuggets with you. Again, make sure you tap the link in the show notes to register for the Content Studio Masterclass. And I'll probably set a bunch of different names in promoting that, but that's because I'm still percolating on what I want the name to be. And that's fine. At the end of the day, you can still click the link to register for the masterclass. It's going to be amazing. You're going to learn a ton. I can't wait to connect with you more personally. Make sure you tap all the links 
Follow us on Instagram at Shades of Content at Patrice Camo. I think that's it. I will see you on Wednesday with the quick Shades of Content content mompreneur hack. And then we're back next Friday with another full episode. Have an amazing, amazing weekend. Peace. All right, now, y'all, don't forget to connect with Shades of Content on Instagram at Shades of Content and with me, Patrice Camo, at Patrice Camo. And also be sure to rate this show, leave a review, and subscribe because that's actually the only way that we're going to grow. I'll see you next week.